Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance. Now for today's video, we're gonna be switching it up a bit. We're actually taking a look at a small cap penny stock that's involved in the Canadian mining and exploration space, specifically copper exploration. Now this company just went public on the CSC a couple of weeks ago. The company name is Big Red Mining Corporation. And in addition to that exciting news, I've actually been reading a number of articles recently about the bullish case for copper, copper prices, and the new use cases that are coming up in the green or renewable energy space. Now before we get into it today, you guys, please take a second, hit the like button. It's a huge help to both myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to do so. And let me know in the comment section below if you've heard of Big Red Mining, what you think about the copper sector overall, and if you're currently holding any shares. Now with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we're gonna be switching it up a little bit. A couple of months ago, I mentioned in one of my videos that I'm looking to incorporate some new sectors and new industries on the channel. And lo and behold, we have one here today for you. So this company is in the Canadian mining sector. It's focused on copper mining and exploration specifically. And I've actually been reading a number of articles lately about copper, the bullish thesis, the use cases for this metal. So I think it's very timely that we get this video out it fits with the channel niche perfectly. It's a small cap penny stock here in Canada. And in addition to that, I've had a number of subscribers actually recommend that I take a look at this company. Now it just IPO'd very recently here. They went public on November 8th, so it's only been trading about a month. I think again, this is a great opportunity to get in on a bullish sector overall, and specifically at the ground level of one of these small cap penny stocks that is just really starting to make a name for itself and be discovered by the investment community. Now with that being said, in terms of video format here today, you guys, we're gonna take a look at the chart. We're gonna talk about some recent news articles in relation to Big Red Mining. Then we're gonna move into their investor presentation, talk a little bit about the industry trends overall and some of the different ways that copper is being used specifically in electric vehicles. And then I'll give you guys my bullish thesis on this company moving forward. So with that being said, first thing I wanted to do here is take a look at the chart. Now, as mentioned, there's not a lot of historical data here. They've only been trading about a month. They went public at 22 cents Canadian on November 8th. They pulled back slightly. And as of close last week, they were sitting at 19 cents Canadian. Now, in terms of market cap on this company, you'll notice a lot of the metrics here are not being displayed on Yahoo Finance because it is such a new company. But in the investor presentation, they call out a market cap right around $4 million US. Now, this company is super unique in a couple of ways that we're going to talk about later in today's presentation. And they really do have a number of competitive advantages compared to some of the other plays in the copper mining space specifically jurisdiction so it's located here in Canada in Ontario so very favorable political and investment environment and the way in which the CEO Jag Sandhu has set up the company which we're going to talk about in a couple of seconds here really does lend itself to great investor returns as he set up this company with the intention of making it a potential acquisition or takeout target down the road. So for those of you who maybe haven't heard of Big Red Mining, which is probably the majority of people watching this channel because it is such a new company, again, they're involved in copper exploration here in Canada in the province of Ontario. If you jump over to their website, you can see an overview of their Dobie Lake copper property. So we're going to talk about this, some of the drill results later in today's presentation, but this is the actual property that we're talking about. And again, the way Jag Sandu has set up this company is they actually have an option over a number of years to acquire 100% interest in the Dobie Lake Copper property. So you'll see the structure of this deal towards the end of the presentation here today, but that's super important to understand here, you guys, is they have the option to fully acquire if the results and if the numbers come in at the levels required to make this a profitable endeavor or investment. Now the property itself is located in Albanel Township, which is about 100 kilometers from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, 
and the property is comprised of 131 different claims which total about 2,600 hectares or the equivalent of 6,500 acres. And in addition to that there's also open ground to the southwest and east of this property which is known to also be copper bearing or an extension of this deposit and that will allow for the potential expansion of this property down the road if the management team sees fit. Now it's important to note that this property was actually drilled or looked at a number of years ago so historically and at that point in time the copper prices were much lower so it wasn't economical to really set up a facility or a full mining operation but it is important to know that this is a historical site it's known to contain copper and the team at Big Red Mining is now starting to go in and do their own drilling to really update and confirm some of those numbers. And as you scroll down on the page, that's exactly what you're gonna see here. So this talks about those historical drill holes. This exploration was initially conducted by Kanamiska Copper Mines back in 1965. So long standing history here, you guys. And as you can see, very rich results that we're gonna talk about a little bit later in the presentation. And that's exactly what this article talks about here, which came out on November 15th. And it talks about the commencement of Big Red Mining on the Doby Lake Copper property in Ontario. So as mentioned, the team is now going in and drilling their own test holes. They're targeting three areas which are known to contain high grade copper mineralization and the numbers or zones in which they're targeting are zone two and one. And we're gonna look at the zones on a map in a couple of seconds here. Past work on the property, you guys, so those previous or historical drill holes have identified copper mineralization up to 9%, so extremely rich deposits compared to a lot of the other competitors or other locations around the world. The Doby Lake property, again, is 6,500 acres in size, and it's in the Algoma district, which was actually the site of the first copper mine here in Canada, and is home to multiple former copper mines and copper occurrences. So this is a copper rich area, it's known to contain copper, and there's been previous mines set up in this district that have been very successful. Now if you scroll down through the article, you can see a map of the property there. We've got a better image of this, so we're gonna take a look at that in a second. And there are comments from the CEO, Jag Sandu. Again, we're gonna look at this guy in more detail very well known in the industry and very well connected in terms of the investment community. I'm excited by the potential of the Doby Lake Copper property. We're anxious to see the results of our drilling program. Our field crews have been very successful with the drill target identification program at Doby Lake. They were able to observe mineralization in several places and collect samples that return exciting copper values. The program consisted of reconnaissance followed by directed prospecting and sampling. I believe this will be very useful and effective in exploring the remainder of the property. So the management team and Jag Sandu himself are super excited about these results and the opportunity to confirm some of those historical numbers that were observed at this property. Now I mentioned in the intro I've been seeing a number of articles and reading articles recently that talk about the copper industry overall and the bullish case for this metal. So I wanted to bring up a couple of these articles before we actually get into the investor presentation. So this was one that came out very recently, December 7th. It talks about copper prices continuing to climb as Chinese imports rise. Obviously China is a major manufacturing hub in the world and copper is a core input in a lot of the manufacturing activity, including smartphones, electric vehicles, batteries, charging systems. So the demand for this stuff, in my opinion, is going to continue to rise. And as we all know, if demand goes up, generally prices tend to follow suit. So copper prices rose Tuesday after China's central bank eased monetary policy and imports into the world's top metal consumer climbed in the month of November. Now speaking of that supply and demand and specifically demand's impact on copper prices, if we pull up a five year chart here, so this is the price in US dollars per one pound of copper. You can see it closed out at $4.34. If you look at a five year chart here, you guys, it's up and to the right, and this is an extremely exciting or bullish chart for anyone who's looking to invest in copper mining or copper exploration type of companies. So you can see if we look back to January 4th of 2016, copper was trading at $2.10 US per pound, and it's essentially doubled its value over the last five years. And that's a direct reflection of the increased demand for copper and a lot of these new use cases where we're starting to see additional demand for copper itself. So that's one of the major tailwinds for this industry overall here you guys. The commodity price itself has seen tremendous appreciation in value over the last couple of years 
and I think this is going to bode well for any players who are involved in this space. Now to add to that point, I also wanted to bring up this article here, which talks about copper's role in the growing electric vehicle production market. Now EV or electric vehicles are one of the most popular spaces to invest right now, whether it's Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, a lot of investment dollars and investor attention are focused on this space. I was also reading an article about Ford's electric vehicle production quotas and targets. The world is really in a craze for electric vehicles right now and copper is a main component in the production of these vehicles, the batteries and the charging systems. Now if you scroll down into this article you can see they actually call out the fact that electric vehicles use more than two times or double the amount of copper of traditional internal combustion vehicles and in addition to that the metal, in this case copper, is heavily used in electric vehicle infrastructure. Now sales of electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles in US, Europe and China have increased each and every year for the past 10 years. This is a trend that I personally expect to continue for decades to come and eventually I see each and every vehicle across the world being either hybrid or electric in nature. Now in addition to the actual vehicles which again are really being pushed by these low carbon output goals from governments across the world, the Biden administration has also introduced green infrastructure bills and a clean energy plan which is estimated to be worth three trillion dollars so governments across the world are calling out they're looking for consumers or customers to switch to more green or eco-friendly forms of transportation and they're also putting in massive amounts of money to the actual infrastructure systems to support these electric vehicles so a ton of investment dollars here and again I think copper is a great way to play this sector without actually investing in some of these highly speculative and highly priced EV companies themselves. And I actually found this presentation from copper.org which talks about how copper is integrated into electric vehicles. So you can see here it's a major component in EVs including the electric motors, batteries, inverters, the wiring and the actual charging station so the infrastructure itself. A pure electric vehicle can actually contain more than a mile of copper wiring and in terms of the overall volume of these vehicles the number of electric vehicles is projected to reach 7 million by 2025 and that's going to require about 5 million charge ports across the world to actually support this system. And furthermore here, if you look at the actual amount of copper used in the various different vehicle types, you can see conventional cars use anywhere between 18 to 49 pounds of copper, hybrid electric cars use about 85 pounds, and plug-in electric vehicles use 132 pounds of copper in each and every unit you guys. So this is significantly more copper required to build these type of vehicles and if you look in different vehicle classes like hybrid electric buses for example they can use anywhere from 196 to 800 pounds of copper. So that obviously leads to a demand surge which you see here and this really shows the growth or expected growth in copper demand out till 2030. So with that being said, now we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna jump into the Big Red Mining Corp investor presentation. And lo and behold, you guys, this is one of the first slides that they actually talk about in that presentation is the demand or expected demand for copper over the next couple of years. The copper market will be in a state of deficit, meaning that mines currently in operation will not be able to catch up with the copper hungry clean energy revolution and the corresponding demand. And they actually expect that deficit to widen from about 300,000 tons, which we observed in 2020, to about 510,000 tons by the year 2027. Now one thing that's important to call out here you guys is the actual development cycles of these mines. So very similar to what we're seeing with oil and gas, once investment dollars slow down into these type of industries, it takes years and years to actually get mines up and running. So in some cases, it can actually take anywhere from 15 to 20 years to find, permit, finance a full-scale copper operation. It's very capital and time intensive, which means the demand for copper is gonna be high over the next five years, and the supply is gonna to continue to be low or strained because they can't get high-grade copper mines online fast enough. And one final point on this slide I wanted to call out, in addition to the electric vehicle market and the infrastructure to support that, solar and wind power generation or energy storage systems are also very copper reliant and need a massive amount of copper input. So it really is the entire green energy space that's reliant on the input of copper. And that really brings us to this slide here, which is really the mission or vision behind Big Red Mining. So Big Red Mining Corp's mission 
is to conduct future drilling campaigns on the Dobie Lake property to maximize its mineable resource potential, in turn making it attractive to potential acquirer or for a future acquisition. And in order to do that, the company intends to drill over eight kilometers on the combined mineralized structures that are previously identified on the property to date. They want to identify all of the potential mineralized structures within the company's land package. They want to expand the land package where it makes sense and where additional mineralized structures have been identified. So we talked about that earlier in the video. They want to drill all the prospective structures along their combined strike lengths down to the prospective depths of approximately 800 meters. And as a final point here, they want to complete the metallurgical test work to maximize recoverable copper. So they really want to tie this up with a nice bow here, make it very presentable with the goal that somebody's going to come along and want to purchase this land package and the drill results from Big Red Mining. So we talked about Jag Sandu, who's the founder and CEO of this company a little bit earlier in the video, but I wanted to double click here, you guys, and take a second just to look at his track record. So he's got over 18 years experience in the capital markets, specifically focused on corporate finance and development. So he knows how to go out and finance a project. He knows how to pitch an idea or make a sale to an investment community. Mr. Sandu or Jag has also assisted domestic and international mining companies in raising multi-million dollars for exploration, development and expansion. So it's not only that corporate finance connection, but he's also got major connections in the mining industry here in Canada and internationally. He's dealt extensively with strategic planning, mergers, acquisitions, financing, and operations for various companies. And throughout this 18-year career, he's held various senior-level executive positions in several publicly listed companies. Now, in addition to JAG, there's also James Atkinson, who's the director and qualified person or QP of the project. Again, very well established career here, over 45 years experience. He's held senior positions like vice president, exploration manager, regional manager at various and very well known mining companies. So Newmont Corporation, BHP Group and AEM. He's also reviewed, evaluated and acquired projects in some of the world's biggest mergers and acquisitions, including the America's Gold and Silver Corporation. And in addition to that, he's designed and managed multi-million dollar programs which are responsible for searching and discovering for various commodities, which include industrial minerals. And in some cases, this comprised of over 100 different staff members. So very well experienced, very tenured group here, you guys. And Jag, in his interviews, which we're going to look at in a second here, this is actually an example of one that came out on November 29th with the CSE. Jag has a very clear vision for this company. He's seen the major bullish factors or trends in the copper industry overall. And he wanted to put this company together in very short order, bring them public to attract investment dollars and really bring this idea to fruition. So a very focused guy, very determined, definitely knows his way around this industry and has the connections that it requires in order to get this kind of idea or project off the ground. So I would definitely recommend you take a look at some of these interviews he's done very well spoken and definitely understands the industry in depth. So now that we've taken a look at the overall macro environment here, we've identified the vision or focus behind Big Red Mining. We've talked about the leadership team that's come together to focus on this project. I did wanna take a quick look at the actual mineralization or the deposit on Dobie Lake. Now, as mentioned, you guys, I'm not a mining expert. This is one of the first mining reviews we've done on the channel. But from what I can tell here, this is a very high grade deposit, again, in a very favorable location and geopolitical country being Canada. So they've identified a couple different zones on this property. We're going to take a look at that map next up, but they have identified two different zones which go east to west. These are identified as copper precious metal structural zones. You can see here in the first bullet point and an additional formation with copper soil anomalies in the northeasterly trending zone. Now the number one copper precious metal structure that's been identified, the one that runs from east to west here you guys, has various different lengths as you can imagine, but on the west side of the formation, it's about 18 meters in terms of width, and on the east side, about 25 meters in terms of width. Now this total deposit has a length of about 3,500 meters or about 3.5 kilometers, so if you're talking 3.5 K by anywhere from 20 to 40 meters in width, 
you're obviously talking about a very sizable or large deposit of copper or copper bearing formation in the ground here. Now earlier in the presentation we mentioned that some of the zones are actually measuring over 6% copper so that's what you can see here. I'll point that out on the map next up and it's also worth mentioning that they have identified silver and gold on the property as well. So here's a look at the actual Dobie Lake property or Dobie Lake location. So the number one zone up top here you can see this is actually where they're identifying 6.8% copper. Number two zone is that copper bearing structure that we talked about and then the Canamisca zone named after the company which formerly drilled this location again has been identified to contain copper and of the nine holes that were drilled in this location they're averaging about 0.4% copper. So as you can see very large property here you guys a number of different deposits or activities that are going on and varying different levels of mineralization that the team is now going in verifying and trying to map out again in hopes of a future acquisition or takeout type of activity. Now in the investor presentation they also provide the historical drill data from the Canamisca zone so again if you're looking to get involved in this company I would definitely encourage you to go in take a look read through these drill results here you guys because this is crucially important when you're making any investment decisions in the mining industry so again this is included in the investor presentation and you can see the drills range in varying depths with varying different levels of copper identified so to close things out here you guys I wanted to take a look at what the team has already pulled together in 2021 and the future plans for this company. So as mentioned, Jag Sandu really tried to pull things together and get this company public as quick as possible and that really comes through in this action plan. So this was all completed in 2021 here you guys. Q1, they signed the option agreement to acquire the Dobie Lake project. Q2, they conducted the assaying, airborne geophysics, trenching and geological mapping. Following that, they completed unit financing and raised approximately $1.2 million. Again, speaking to JAG's ability to raise money and grab investment attention. In Q3, they listed on the CSE, so we just saw that. They actually just listed on the Frankfurt Exchange as well. And Q4 of this year, which is what they've just started now in that article we talked about in the intro, is conduct the additional drilling program on the Doby Lake location. And that's really going to run throughout the duration of 2022 as they complete the picture for this land package. Now I mentioned earlier in the video that Jag Sandu had acquired this location through an option agreement. So I did want to spend a couple of seconds on this slide here you guys. So it's really set up over a four year period which is a mix of investment dollars or amount of dollars spent in work on the location and return in shares for the land holders. So you can go in, you can take a look at this. But in essence here you guys, they have the option to acquire 100% interest in this location over the four year period. And again, that's gonna be based on those drill results. So if Jag and the rest of the team are really excited and really bullish about what those results are returning, they're gonna go ahead, they're gonna to continue to acquire this location and exercise this option or agreement. And if for whatever reason it doesn't come to fruition, they're not locked in, they haven't put up all the money up front, so I think this again is a very smart way to structure the deal and really speaks to Mr. Sandu's experience in the industry and the mining sector as a whole. And that leads us to this slide here, so the conclusion of today's video. And I wanted to quickly bring this up because I wanted to compare Big Red Mining to some of the other players in the copper space. And a couple numbers I wanted to call out here you guys is really number one, the market cap. So if you compare Big Red Mining to any of the other players in this industry, you can see they're a fraction of the size, about $4 million US in terms of market cap. So again, to my initial point, you really are getting in at the ground level here, at the exploration phase of this company. They've got zero long-term debt and an enterprise value of about $3 million US. So again, if you look through the list here, you can see anywhere in the tens to hundreds of millions of dollars in terms of enterprise value and market cap. So again, Big Red Mining represents a true penny stock opportunity here in Canada, very favorable geopolitical environment. We talked about some of those major tailwinds for the copper industry overall, the additional use cases and demand that the world now has for copper being electric vehicles, solar power, wind power, some of the supporting networks or infrastructure for those green energy build outs. So I think overall here you guys, this definitely represents a very unique buying opportunity this is one that I'm not currently holding, but I have added to my watch list. Again, 
with the intent of expanding my portfolio outside of some of the traditional sectors or industries we've covered on the channel. I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts on Big Red Mining in the comment section below. I'm also going to leave a link to the company website if you want to take a look at some of these drill results or any of the additional news or information provided by the management team. Now with that being said here you guys, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, McNally Money, feel free to do so. And if you're still watching the video at this point, hopefully you found some value in the video today on Big Red Mining. So make sure you hit the like button on your way out. It's a huge help to both myself and the channel. With that being said, thanks so much for watching you guys. That's all for now and have a great rest of your day.